Hey, how's it going guys? Today I just wanted to give you my list for the top five best upgrades or things to get for your concealed carry P365 or P365X or even the XL. All of them, you know, it works for all three of those uh, different models because they're pretty much the same exact gun with some minor differences. Real quick guys, before we get into the list, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button if you like tactical gear, firearms and stuff. I'm trying to get up to a thousand subscribers so I can finally get my YouTube partnership back. So I would really appreciate it. I got uh, a bunch of new videos coming, night vision stuff, and honestly just a lot more videos of every type for gear reviews. So if you would hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get into my top picks. So the first thing you're gonna wanna get, obviously, if you're concealed carrying the P365 is a solid holster from a trusted brand, the one that puts together quality holsters, and they're number one overall comfortable for you. So the one I went with was the Tier 1 Conceal Axis Slim. That was my first holster. Uh, appendix carry is by far the most concealable type of carry. Um, and for me, it's pretty comfortable as well too. So I got the Axis Slim, the little uh, elastic band that uh, attaches the sidecar holster to the main holster is actually really comfortable and flexible. Um, and then eventually I just got the uh, Tier 1 Conceal Axis Elite. And what that did for me was it allowed me to have the uh, light combo I wanted. As well as I've noticed that the Tier 1 Conceal Axis Elite is actually more comfortable than the uh, the Slim. And that's mainly because of a little chunk or a corner, which I'll highlight for you. And it's slanted on the Tier 1 Conceal Axis Elite versus the Axis Slim. It's like a rounded corner. And that corner can dig into you, uh, mainly your thigh, when you bring up your right side leg versus uh, the left side is kind of more uh, tapered and slanted. But on the uh, Axis Elite, they've actually kind of fixed that and both sides are slanted to kind of go with your thighs when they come up or when you're sitting. Now that that's out of the way, the number two thing you should probably pick up after you get a holster, and I know a lot of people will have you know different orders, but I think this should be the second thing that you pick up if you're going to pick up something else, is a weapon light. Hands down, the best weapon light on the market right now is the Streamlight TLR7 Sub. The main reason I actually had to upgrade from the Axis Slim to the Axis Elite is because the P365 version of the Axis Slim only had comp compatibility with the TLR6. The TLR6 is pretty much a joke compared to the TLR7 sub. The TLR6 is only 100 lumens, and in my opinion, the activation for the light, which is on the side, is far inferior to the uh, you know gas pedal uh, lever on the TLR7 sub. So TLR6, 100 lumens, TLR7 sub, 500 lumens way brighter. It blows it out of the water. The other option on the market right now is the Surefire XSC. And honestly, it's smaller. Um, the, the TLR7 or 6 is smaller than the TLR7, so that might be one of the reasons why you would want to. But in my in my opinion, it really doesn't matter. I'll hold a, a, a candle to the TLR7. But the SSC or XSC is actually smaller, so that might be a reason, but it's three times the price, so $325 versus the $130 you'll pay for the TLR7 sub. And it's actually less powerful. I think it's like 350 lumens, which is kind of just sad. I know that a lot of people put a lot of stock in brand names, so Surefire is, you know, I think it's American made versus, you know, Streamlight is Chinese made, but. Streamlight has is pretty well, you know, proven brand, and you know, for the money, I don't think you can beat the TLR7 sub. My number three pick for the third thing you should get for your P365, P365X, or XL is actually a red dot. So the X and the XL both come pre-milled with uh, slide cuts for a uh, optic. The P365 doesn't. However, I was about to have mine shipped off, uh, and you can get a slide cut put in your rail for about $170, uh, and that's Cerakoting over the raw metal too, so that's an option. Uh, if you don't want to go with Red Dot, obviously just skip this and go on right to the next one. For my optic, I chose the Holosun 407K. The It has a 6 MOA dot, which I actually wanted as opposed to the um, 
507k, which has the circle dot reticle. You know, it's it's your own preference at the end of the day, but for me, I wanted a simple red dot, but I didn't, for something I had heard from other people is that 3 MOA on a pistol dot sometimes is easy to get lost. So 6 MOA actually helps you versus hurts you being bigger, and especially on a concealed carry weapon, uh, you're not going to be engaging people at extremely long distances where you need great precision that you would need with the standard 3 MOA dot. Now, my P365X actually came with the Sig Romeo Zero, so I actually got to try that as well. However, I think by far you're way better off getting the 407 or 507K from Holosun. Built much better, much easier to mess with the buttons. I don't know who decided to put the uh, on off button on the Sig Romeo in the center. And, you know, overall, I think you're going to be much better served buying a Holosun versus a Sig Romeo. Now, one thing I will say after carrying just a little bit, I realized how dirty the lens gets concealed carrying with a red dot um, with an open emitter. So it'd probably be the same case even if you had a closed emitter, um, but maybe not so bad. But yeah, that you get hair, you get grease, you get skin. It's, it's kind of nasty um, on that in the uh, lens of the red dot. So just be prepared for that. It might help if you get one of the Hollow Sun closed emitter models. But uh, for me, the 407K was what I went with. Okay, so number four, um, this is actually a product that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, but I think it's honestly amazing. The huge uh, draw to the P365, it was, it was the first um, pistol in this long line of like one and a half stacks, you know, uh, that give you much better magazine capacity in the same size as a lot of single stack concealed carry pistols. So that was the huge draw to it. And what MagGuts um, has done, it's a company called MagGuts, M-A-G-G-U-T-S, is they've actually replaced the follower, the spring, and for they've also replaced the uh, base plate. And they've actually given you plus two rounds for every SIG P365 magazine. So you can get that for the regular P365, and you'll go from a 10-round uh, mag to a 12-round mag, which is crazy. Um, that's you're pretty much making your your uh, pistol a P365X or XL, and the the amount of material it adds on the bottom is nothing. It's just like the tiniest pinky grip, and you get 12 rounds. Um, so they they also make it for the uh, P365 um, extended magazine. So they would hold 12, but now it holds 14. And then the standard flush fit uh, magazines for the P365X and XL now holds 12 or sorry 14 rounds so that's crazy it's awesome um, I've used them both a little bit um, I you know I haven't shot a ton through them which you know your mileage may vary if you want to trust you know other people's opinions but as far as I've seen online they hold up really well the only issues I did run into is with the p365x uh, followers you know that I installed the kits. I was having some trouble uh, getting the slide to lock back on the last round. So that could have been me. I know in the past I've had uh, problems where I would let my thumb rest on the slide release and that would cause it to not lock back. Maybe it was me, um, but it, I think it was probably the magazine. So um, take that as what you will. Um, their advertises actually ensuring that the mag will lock back every single time. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me. So it could have been also the ammo I was using. I think I was using 147 grains, so that might have had something to do with it. Um, but yeah, that was just my experience. But yeah, overall awesome product. Gives you pretty much free capacity. Um, they're only, they are a little bit expensive. I think they're like $35 each for each magazine. But when you consider that if you buy an extended magazine, it's going to be like another $60 with the ridiculous prices that SIG uh, magazines are. Speaking of SIG magazines, I think the fifth thing that you might want to pick up uh, is actually a spare magazine. So all the P365s come with uh, two magazines, which is great. I mean, you're pretty much set up for your own appendix sidecar uh, concealed carry holster. Um, however, if you are doing appendix and you have a sidecar, you might want to consider, or even just if you don't, uh, is buying the extended magazine for your version. I think it's better or I think it's more mandatory 
if you have the P365, you want that little uh, extension that gives you plus two rounds. And then if you have the uh, mag guts, it's a 14 round magazine. Um, I would definitely recommend that. I personally haven't bought it for the P365X. I think that's just a little bit too long. I'm actually really happy with the amount of capacity I have on the P365X and the length of it. If I went for that extended magazine, I think it might be a little too long for me, but maybe not for you. Anyway, guys, uh, that's my top five list of upgrades that I think you should definitely go out uh, and spend your money on if you have a P365, P365X, or XL. Uh, let me know if you have any uh, different opinions or what you think about my choices. Um, again, this is just my opinion, so if you have suggestions, let me know. If you have any questions about the uh, products I mentioned today, just let me know and I'll try and answer them in the comments. Have a good one.